I'm Dr. Bonnie Hamilton, pediatrician and mother. I'm Cynthia Carmichael, family physician and mother. I'm Dr. Jeff Mann, orthopedist and father. I'm Dr. Amanda Milstein, pediatrician and mom. I'm Dr. Cynthia Mahoney, internist and mother. Dr. Megan Whitman, internist and mother. I'm Dr. Ashley McClure, primary care physician and mom. I'm Brent Andrews, neurologist and father. We are the health professionals from Climate Health Now. Dear presidents and prime ministers leading the G20 countries. We health professionals stand united in support of a pragmatic, science-based approach to managing the COVID-19 pandemic. In that same spirit, we also stand united in support of a healthy recovery from this crisis. We have witnessed firsthand how fragile communities can be when their health, food security, and freedom to work are interrupted by a common threat. The layers of this ongoing tragedy are many and magnified by inequality and underinvestment in public health systems. We have witnessed death, disease, and mental distress at levels not seen for decades. These effects could have been partially mitigated or possibly even prevented by adequate investments in pandemic preparedness, public health, and environmental stewardship. We must learn from these mistakes and come back stronger, healthier, and more resilient. Before COVID-19, air pollution, primarily from traffic, inefficient residential energy use for cooking and heating, coal-fired power plants, the burning of solid waste and agricultural practices, was already weakening our bodies. It increases the risk of developing and the severity of pneumonia, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, lung cancer, heart disease, and strokes, leading to 7 million premature deaths each year. Air pollution also causes asthma and adverse pregnancy outcomes like a low birth weight, putting further strain on our healthcare systems. A truly healthy recovery will not allow pollution to continue to cloud the air we breathe and the water we drink. It will not permit unabated climate change and deforestation, potentially unleashing new health threats upon vulnerable populations. The healthy economy and civil society, the most vulnerable among us are looked after. Workers have access to well-paying jobs that do not exacerbate pollution or nature degradation. Cities prioritize pedestrians, cyclists, and public transport, and our rivers and skies are protected and clean. Nature is thriving, our bodies are more resilient to infectious diseases, and nobody is pushed into poverty because of healthcare costs. To achieve that healthy economy, we must use smarter incentives and disincentives in the service of a healthier, more resilient society. If governments were to make major reforms to current fossil fuel subsidies, shifting the majority toward the production of clean, renewable energy, our air would be cleaner, and climate emissions massively reduced, powering an economic recovery that would spur global GDP gains of almost 100 trillion US dollars between now and 2050. As you direct your attention to the post-COVID response, we ask that your chief medical officer and chief scientific advisor are directly involved in the production of all economic stimulus packages that they report on both the short and long-term public health repercussions of these, and that they give their stamp of approval. The enormous investments your governments will make over the coming months in key sectors like healthcare, transport, energy, and agriculture must have health protection and promotion embedded at their core. What the world needs now is a healthy recovery. Your stimulus plans must be a prescription for just that. From the doctors, nurses, health students, and all health professionals of America, in solidarity with our colleagues across the world.